from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is episode 14, segment one. For the past two episodes, we featured Amtrak's Coast Starlight northbound from Los Angeles to Seattle. Today, we reverse course, heading out of Seattle southbound this hat is a souvenir from the Coast Starlight. You won't see any Amtrak employees wearing a hat like this. It's just for bringing back memories. And there are sure to be great memories if you take this train. Let's watch the first part of south, the southbound journey on the Coast Starlight. Ending a northbound trip on Amtrak's Coast Starlight often means arriving in Seattle in the dark. Beginning your southbound trip, however, means pulling out at a civilized 9.45 in the morning, affording some great views of the city once you emerge from the underground platform. In the foreground of Seattle Seahawks Stadium, King Street Station is where people board for the eastbound Empire Builder and the southbound Coast Starlight. The station has recovered from years of modernization remodels to be restored to some of its historical grandeur. It's not far from here to Tacoma, Seattle's working class sister. Both cities share the remarkable Puget Sound and the snow-capped Cascades to the east. Between here and Portland, the Coast Starlight looks over the Columbia River with the view of Mount Hood. If you get off at Portland, you'll be free to explore one of the most livable and green cities in the country. A freeway was removed along the river for parkland, which is now Tom McCall Park. On the Washington side of the Columbia River, you can visit Fort Vancouver, the historic Hudson's Bay Company Center that welcomes so many Oregon Trail pioneers. Behind this defensive tower, you can see the highway bridge that crosses the Columbia River to Oregon. Back in the days when this fort traded for beaver pelts, Native Americans would wait outside the gates to be invited a few at a time to trade their beaver pelts for goods at the fort store. Hi, we're at Fort Vancouver. This is the end of the Oregon Trail. This is where many of the pioneers ended their 2,000-mile ended their journey. Fort Vancouver is right along the Columbia River and was run by the chief factor of the Hudson's Bay Company, John McLaughlin, who's known as the father of Oregon. My second language is Spanish. and Here I use my imperfect Spanish to introduce the Fort Vancouver visit. Estamos en Fort Vancouver. Este es el fin de este camino, el Oregon Trail, un camino de dos mil millas de distancia. Allí el jefe de esta área por el Hudson's Bay Company fue el padre de Oregon, se llama John McLaughlin. It's normal to make mistakes and not speak smoothly when learning a new language. These mistakes are important to reaching fluency, which you will. Fort Vancouver is part of the National Park System. 
This ranger is telling us about the history of the fort, which traded in beaver pelts from as far away as Alaska and California. Fort Vancouver was administered and owned by a private company, the Hudson's Bay Company. Its chief factor, John McLaughlin, was the law in this whole region. Fort Vancouver became a very busy place. The fort's cannons demonstrated power, but under John McLaughlin, they were never fired in anger. Friendly relations with Native Americans was essential to the business of the English-owned Hudson's Bay Company. The chief factor and the company clerks lived in style, especially considering this was such an untamed land. High tech at Fort Vancouver was blacksmithing. The shop is open to visitors when volunteers are using the era's equipment to work with metal. High carbon wedge to go into a uh, into an axe I maybe. Mean. I uh, gotta make some axe heads like these right here. So far, we've taken Amtrak from Seattle to Portland. Now we ride through the Willamette Valley to Eugene. We'll pass through Oregon's capital city, Salem. The flat, fertile Willamette Valley is the breadbasket of Oregon. I wonder if this is ryegrass, mature ryegrass. I really don't know what it is. Oregon farmers produce most of the country's ryegrass seed, marion berries, and hazelnuts. They also grow hops to help supply Oregon's many microbreweries. All this fertile soil was deposited by a cataclysmic flood, resulting from an ice dam breaking in what's now Montana, sending a massive wall of water into Washington and Oregon. The sediment from that flood settled here, leaving very fertile soil for pioneer farmers and their descendants today. Amtrak's Coast Starlight pulls into Eugene in late afternoon. Eugene is the southern end of the Willamette Valley. Riders are in for some incredible scenery when the Coast Starlight will cross the Cascade Mountains via Willamette Pass. We'll share that in part two of the Coast Starlight Southbound. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Further up the track, we'll do some vocabulary work, but first, let's see what book we're reviewing today. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. After American Railroad's golden age, thousands of miles of track were abandoned. Rather than see these valuable transportation corridors disappear, an organization called Rails to Trails turns them into trails for bicycling, hiking, and sometimes horseback riding. Members get to see good work that's being done by enjoying the organization's magazine. Each issue features rail trails throughout the country, as well as maps that can help them enjoy them. There are always interesting features like this one on railroad trestles. If you want to receive the magazine, you must become a member. I bought my first copy from a group that supports libraries, but I soon became a member myself to support their important work. Millions of people are enjoying healthy lives by getting outside and using these trails. And if you need something to feel good about, you can always enjoy a Rails to Trails magazine. You can contact Rails to Trails at railstotrails.org. You may never get to drive a train, but you can enjoy hiking and biking where the trains used to pass. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.